So, um, here we are. It's funny how everything begins with so these days, doesn't it? When you hear people being interviewed, they always start with so. And I have to start with so. So, <clears throat> here's my news I want to share with you. <clears throat> I, uh, oh, I don't know how to say this, really. Well, it's not difficult. Uh, I went to see my doctor uh, just before Christmas um, uh, for, for a flu jab. Uh, I'd heard it was going to be a bit bad this year. And thought maybe a flu jab would be a good idea. Keep me in circulation. I had things to do, you know. So I went to see my doctor, Tony. Uh, he was at my school a year or two above me, but I've known him and he's been my doctor for many, many years. And uh, he said, well, let's have, a, let's have a general checkup, you know. MOT and see if everything's all right. Uh, I have one of these every year, there's nothing to worry about. So, he, you know, aside from the flu jab, I had my you know, blood taken and urine and, uh, you know, blood pressure and pulse and tapping here and tapping there, say, oh, I'll say 99, you know, the, the, the general procedure. Didn't think much more of it, really. Then um, next day, he, he called me up and he said, I'm a little worried about your PSA levels. Now, I don't know if you know what PSA levels are. I hope you do. If you're a man, you certainly should do. Uh, it stands for prostate-specific antigen. Um, and these are things uh, that the prostate give out if, if it's under attack from some sort of tumour. Uh, and you're supposed to get them checked every year, you know. And uh, I think a normal level is anything under four nanograms per millilitre. Um, and mine was 4.97, nearly five. Well, so not very high, to be perfectly honest. Um, someone of 10 years older than me would expect five as a sort of mean level of PSA. So, so really, I wasn't too concerned. But uh, Tony said, maybe, maybe you should consider an, an MRI. It seemed to be taking a bit of a sledgehammer to a peanut. But I said, OK, you know, just keep him happy. And mm, I suppose to keep myself happy as well. So I, I went into one of those MRI imaging suites, or whatever you call them, you know, a great big ring, and you get put on a flatbed and sort of ease through until this ring is around you, and then it fires these magnetic beams, and you know, tong, 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 tong. Do you remember Regan in uh, in The Exorcist, the poor little girl, Regan McNeil, being, being examined for, well, I was being examined, not for um, anything as beastly as Satan, but uh, something as beastly, and it was in, in, in the prostate that they were looking at. What is a prostate? You may well wonder, and I'm still not that certain myself. It's, a, it's not an organ so much as a, a gland, I believe. Um, and it sits between a, a man, because only men have them, a man's bladder uh, and, uh, and his, uh, his old feather, his todger, I suppose. And it has a tube going through it from the bladder and that eventually ends up in the urethra. Uh, and it, uh, it does something to make the... Um, the sperm more fluid once it uh, hits, uh, hits its um, hits its uh, target, I suppose. It makes <laughs> I don't know. It makes it less viscous. Oh, goodness knows. Anyway, it, it's a it's a very important chap for men to have, um, and it does often go wrong. It gets enlarged and makes peeing difficult or too easy or something. And and of course, it is an absolutely prone bugger for for, for cancer. Anyway, I've said the c word first first off now. So, uh, where were we? Yes, I had the MRI. Um, again, went home, didn't really think much more of it. Then the next day, Tony calls again, and then he says, oh, Stephen, um, something rather mischievous showed up. Good word, Tony, mischievous. Uh, I said, what does that mean? He said, well, you know, maybe you should go and see a specialist now. So he, uh, he sent me to a fellow called Roger, who was a professor of urology, uh, a very famous chap in his field, I believe. Um, and Roger had looked at the MRI image, and he suggested uh, a biopsy. Dear, how on earth do you get live at a, a, um, at a prostate? You know, I think, I think oh, cool, up, it's either one, one tube or up the other. Or, well, anyway, it's all very personal and undignified, this story, so I might as well bite the bullet and come clean with you. Um, it, it, it was a transrectal biopsy, so some sort of thing went up um, and, and uh, took a clip of living tissue from... The prostate is not an experience I'd recommend to my worst enemy. Really, very unpleasant uh, feeling. It's tight, like taking an ice core, you know, in the poles. Uh, anyway, they took these two bits out of me, just to be sure. Um, and um, again, another wait, and then I uh, get the results the next day. And yes, indeed, there is, there is a cancer there. Uh, uh, a carcinoma is a Nadina carcinoma is the correct word, I believe. Um, 
And these things are graded. There's, there's a particular grading system for prostate cancer. It's called the Gleason score. Um, and my score was eight, it seemed. Um, we'll come to that a bit later, but uh, that's, that's high enough to warrant some sort of treatment. And um, the next stage was just to make assurance, doubly sure, as um, Lady Macbeth puts it, or is it Macbeth, one of them, um, and have a PET scan, uh, you know, one of these things where they inject you with a, um, some sort of radioactive material, gallium arsenide in this uh, instance, I think, or just gallium, not the arsenide, no, I'm thinking of something else there. They inject you with gallium and, uh, and then it sends around the system and any bit that's in any way cancerous is lit up, shows avidity, I think is the technical term. So, I'm sorry if I'm boring you, but anyway, I'll, I'll get to the chase. Um, again, I, that gets done and I come back and another night of waiting and the next day, yes indeed, there it is. Um, doesn't seem to have spread the cancer because what you don't want cancer to do is to spread from one one area to another. Metastasis, they call it. You don't want it to metastasize, to spread its cells, to send them all over the place because then you've got a heck of a job dealing with it. There didn't seem to be metastasis, but one of the lymph nodes, they, they surround the lymph nodes, surround the prostate like a sort of necklace, um, and, and one of them had something which called for active surveillance, according to the... Uh, according to the radio, uh, radiologist who, who looked at the image. And so I went again to see Roger, the urologist, and he looked at the PET scan, and uh, he looked at the MRI scan and the biopsy results, and we had a couple of options. One was um, radiotherapy, but that's a very long and difficult process. Um, I mean, it's fine for some people, but uh, there were a number of issues uh, with it for me. Um, I won't go into the full details of it because you have to weigh these things up um, and the other was to get rid of the prostate to get it out by using a process known as radical laparoscopic um, prostatectomy uh, robotic no less radical robotic laparoscopic prostatectomy in other words sending little robots in through tiny holes um, that are pierced in your tummy uh, and that's what the operation we decided on should be uh, because he also wanted to take out some some of the um, uh, some of the lymph nodes uh, just in case there was a spread there so where are we now well we're in December and it's nearly Christmas so an, an operation is, is decided on and in in the first week of January I had the operation I've cut to the chase um, and uh, it all seemed to go pretty well they took the prostate out they took out 11 lymph nodes um, the, the the various bits that were taken out were then examined and it was discovered in fact that I had a Gleason score of nine not of eight and considering ten is the maximum this was clearly rather an aggressive little bugger uh, so uh, what next well you, you you have to recover and that's what I've been doing uh, in case you've been wondering why I've been out of the public eye <laughs> I'm sure you haven't uh, but uh, I have been um, keeping my head down as much as possible because obviously you want to get better without um, without strangers um, with the best intent in the world sending you all kinds of cards and flowers and letters because uh, well you have to answer them all and, and, and uh, I wasn't quite up to that it's a, it's a bit of a business having an operation like that it's like being, there are five holes punctured in you so it's like being stabbed five times admittedly you're asleep and uh, it's all very um, antiseptic and hygienic and so on and like a stabbing in the street but it, it's to the body it's the same it's the same rather traumatic effect and uh, you think you're going to recover really well but it, it takes Longer than, uh, longer than it might, and it's all pretty undignified and unfortunate. So my family and my divine and darling husband, of course, were just marvellous, and uh, those few friends that have known have been very discreet and kind about it. Um, because cancer, you know, in the end, that's a word that just rings in your head. Cancer, I've got cancer. I went around saying to myself, I've got cancer. Good heavens, Stephen, you're not the sort of person who gets cancer. I mean... I know it's an old cliche, but you don't think it's going to happen to you. Cancer is something that happens to other people. You're probably now looking into my eyes and seeing, oh, yes, I can see. He's, he's the kind of cancery person. I can see that now. That's how one looks at people who've got cancer. And you almost wonder, is there a particular smell, a particular aura they give off of that cancer? What a horrible word it is. It's one of our real taboo words, isn't it? I knew an old woman who couldn't even say it. She couldn't say death or killed or died or any of those words or cancer. She once described someone as, as having <coughs> of ah, um, because it is. It's a sort of thing, if you have Tourette's, you might say cancer a lot. It's just one of those shocking, hard, difficult words. Um, and so far as we know, it's all, it's all been got. Uh, are there greater chances me, of me getting other kinds of cancer now? Uh, apparently not, if you get prostate cancer, you, you, you don't necessarily uh, find yourself more susceptible to other kinds. Um, 
Mm -hmm. But uh, I won't know for sure until my PSA levels are checked, and they should be zero now because I have no prostate, so the prostate-specific antigen, the PSA level, should be zero. But if there is anything left on the bed of the prostate where they've taken it out, then maybe that will spread and I'll need radiotherapy and then the whole damn thing will start again. But for the moment, I'm fit and well and happy, and I just wanted to let you know, because rumours had started to swirl, you know, good, good, goodness knows, you know, I'm not the most important person in the world, but if you are ever on television and do things in the public eye, uh, people naturally seem to exhibit great interest, and a newspaper had called up, and uh, I thought, well, before, before the, the gossip gets silly and ill-informed, I might as well come clean. So there you are, Stephen Fry, my, my fight with cancer. Of course, it wasn't a fight, I just submitted and met the surgeon and the surgeon Ben was wonderful and Roger, the urologist, was wonderful and Tony, my doctor, wonderful. Generally felt my life was saved by this early intervention. So I would urge any of you men uh, of a certain age to, to think about getting your PSA levels checked. And then, of course, it's all about discussing what the what the outcome, what the plan should be with you, with your specialist and your doctor. Um, and uh, I can't tell you how fortunate I am. Yes, I did go private. Uh, I, I, I'm insured. My union, the Screen Actors Guild, uh, insures me in America, and I'm insured over here too. And um, I, I don't think, in fact, I know, because my surgeon works mostly for the National Health and does exactly the same uh, procedure all, all the time for all kinds of men, because one in eight men will get prostate cancer at some kind, some, some time in their life. It's overtaken breast cancer, as you may know, uh, um, but, which is not particularly important. It's not, it's not a, a rival match or anything. Um, and it's one in four if you're of African descent. Uh, so that's the epidemiology of it. Uh, so it's, it really is very likely that, that if you're a man, or not very likely, but it's, there's a strong possibility that you, you will you know, get it. And, um, and so, you, so, so it's worth checking your PSAs and then going from there. It isn't always necessary to have it out in the way I have. I'm not saying that's, of course, always the answer. It's the answer is to, to discuss these things with your doctor. Um, that, that's it, really. I, I, I don't want to take up any more of your time. Thank you for, for listening and, and watching. Um, and, uh, yeah, get, just get yourself checked uh, and, and follow your doctor's advice in all these matters. Um, but otherwise, I'm bloody lucky. Lucky to be surrounded by such wonderful people. Lucky to have had such an incredible team working with me and for me. Uh, and, and lucky, of course, to have an immune system because that's the real hero of these things. It's the recovery, which is so phenomenal from, from an operation. And um, yeah, here's hoping anyway. Let's, uh, here's hoping I get another few years left on this planet because um, I enjoy life at the moment. And um, that's a marvelous thing to be able to say. And I would rather it didn't go away. So thanks again. <laughs> this really is the end.